everybody. Welcome back to the movie review section of Talk of the Town. My name is Brian Kelly. I'm here with Eileen Ma. Eileen, it's the summer. How's the movie scene? I don't even want to talk about it. It's so dismal. But how is, how is your summer going so far? What have you been doing? I guess you don't want to talk about movies. <laughs> no, I will. I'll talk about movies. But how's your summer going? It's going great. You went to Canada? I did. Yeah. I had a unique experience. Uh, Noelle, as I told you, I think in the last show, has gone horse crazy. And she signed up and went to a three-week sleepaway horse camp. And I was lucky enough to go one week as the nurse. Let me tell oh. you, what a blast. And, did you have to um, fix the horses? No, and thank God nobody got hurt, and uh, it was just so much fun. And I think I mentioned before Horseplay Stables as well, and I just wanted to pass along to everyone. Um, I'm hoping that this is going to air Friday night. Horseplay out on Route 28 is having an open house this Saturday, August 8th, from 1 to 4. So if you have anybody in the family interested in horseback riding, or you just want to be an a ad on the Milton it's Cable. not an ad. Like I told you, when I find something in town that I'm so impressed with, and, and Noelle's been taking lessons up there for a couple of months now, and, and like I, I tell um, Terry, who runs it, it is Noelle's dream come true is to be riding these horses and to be able to do it two minutes from my house. And if you've never been there before, like I said, I had never been there sure. before. Uh, you take that turn off Route 28. See, the old Golden you, Spur. And you go. Is that know, what it was? Yeah, I believe that's and what And you it was. and you go up this hill. And all of a sudden, you can't believe where you are. There's all these horses yeah. running around. So, Very nice. so, just to let you know about that. But yeah, speaking about movies, there. This has been. I can't remember um, a summer that has been so so dismal on the movie front. Um, I've seen a lot, and I'll talk about a lot briefly because there's not a whole bunch of good things to say. But I will start off with the good things first. I think, is that good? You want me to start off with the good things first? Uh, for, what do you think, folks? The, let's go with the good first. Um, in case we lose, run out of time, we missed out on the bad stuff. Uh, I'll start with the things that are still out in the movies. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince I came out. I haven't seen out. it yet, but I, um, I'm going to see it. came out about a month or so ago, mm -hmm. doing, doing very, very well in the theaters. It's rated PG, and I have absolutely no idea why. It definitely warrants a PG-13 rating. There are a couple of very, um, I find, frightening scenes of... Um, the Dementors. Do you remember the Dementors? Love the Dementors. Uh, okay, so they're in it. There's a couple of uh, scene where a girl is almost possessed. So I have no idea why this garnered a PG when previous Harry Potter movies have rated PG-13 and still done very well at the box office. So I wouldn't take the little, little kids to see it. But anyway, this is the one, two, three, four, five. The sixth installment in the Harry Potter series. It's the, based is on the sixth book. only one more left? Well, right? that's an interesting story. There is one more book left. Remember, each book and each movie details one year in the life of Harry Potter and his friends at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. So this is his sixth year. Um, and he's what? He must be about 16, 17 now. The final book, book seven, which was published, what, uh, maybe two summers ago, they're actually breaking down into two movies. And I have to say, at first I thought, boy, what a, what a money-grubbing move that is. But it's such a She's huge, so skeptical detailed the movie book. <laughs> and I have basically been disappointed with almost all of the Harry Potter movies because as someone who absolutely loves every single one of the books, you can't possibly put everything in there. And I realize that. Right. But it's hard to say, well, why didn't they just put that scene in it? That was a crucial scene. If I was the movie maker, I couldn't have ever left that scene out. And this is probably one of the movies where I, I won't say that. They did a really good job, the screenwriters, in adapting this. And it was directed by David Yates. He's um, a 47-year-old British man. And he also directed the 2007 Order of the Phoenix, the fifth book. So he's done the fifth and the sixth. And I just started to look back. I just wanted to think about who have di who's directed all of these. Um, the first two, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, were both directed by an American, Christopher Columbus, who you might know from uh, The Home Alone movies. Um, the third one, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, was directed by a Mexican, Alfonso Cuaron. And he did an interesting movie, if, if you like um, foreign films, a Spanish film, and I'm, I'm going to do the best I can with the pronunciation, Y tu mama tambien, which was really very, oh, a very sure. interesting movie. Um, another British director did the fourth movie, uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The fifth and sixth were both by David Yates, and he has been tapped to also direct what will be the seventh and eighth movies. So obviously movies. they like him. So they like him. And I right. do think that the British directors have, have done a better job. Although I remember when... He, when he directed Order of the Phoenix, I do remember reviewing this and looking at some of the other things that he had done, and he had mostly been in TV. And I have to tell you, 
The fifth book, Order of the Phoenix, and the fifth movie is, is by far my least favorite. This one I liked a lot better, and I think he's gotten better as a director of feature films. He was previously um, just a, a TV commercial director. And started I started out with something like Talk of the Town. Yeah, on well, um, <laughs> TV commercials and you TV... You like that joke. I heard it. I'm trying to think. I'm thinking and you're messing with my mind. <laughs> What am I trying he to started, say? Where he, he started. He started um, basically <clears throat> directing TV, especially um, like short 30-minute shows. And that's what I felt from Order of the Phoenix. It was, it was short segments. Here's a 30-minute piece of Harry Potter. Let's All move on. Here's together. a 30-minute piece of Harry mm -hmm. Potter. Let's move on. This movie flows much, much better. So Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince is about Harry Potter growing up. He's a big boy now. He actually confronts Dumbledore at one point. And because he's growing up, he gets the privilege of accompanying Dumbledore on a very, very dangerous and important mission. He gets finally uh, to be taken into Dumbledore's confidence. And this is where we finally see he is the chosen one. He is the only one that's going to be able to bring Voldemort down. The only thing I don't like about this is you don't see Voldemort at all in this movie. However, you do get a glimpse into what made Voldemort into who he is. We get to see his childhood. We get to see his genesis, what caused him to turn basically to the dark side. So great movie, some incredibly beautifully sh beautiful shots, but again I'm going to say my only um, uh, the only bad thing was there were a couple of, there was this beautiful, beautiful shot where Harry and Draco Malfoy have um, a, a little um, a, a fight a big fight actually in a bathroom and Harry has come into possession of a secret, uh, a secret book that has spells written in the side and he very um, uncharacteristically throws a spell that he has no idea what it does at Draco Malfoy and it actually rips the boy to shreds and he lies bleeding on a, oh, a that's watery nice. Nice. bathroom floor. That's what I'm saying, PG. Draco Malfoy is lying, you know, he's got a, a beautiful white shirt, black pants, and he's lying bleeding on this wet, watery bathroom floor as Harry Potter is saying, oh my God, what did I just do? But it's, it's this two-second scene and, and it's just so beautifully shot that you want it to last just just for a, a second or two more, and it doesn't. The whole movie just goes at a very, very, very quick pace. And it's because it's a big book. The movie only runs about two and a half hours, and they're trying to jam as much in as they can. Probably, once again, my absolute favorite character in the whole movie is um, Severus Snape, played by Alan Rickman, who is just... There's no one that captures the he's bad the same boy one playing that role like him. Yeah, he's played it since, since the beginning. You know, the long, greasy black hair, the flowing black yeah. robes. Every time, every scene he he's in, he, he steals. Every line he says, you're hanging on every word. And that's how he talks, and I just love it. He's yeah. great. And also of note, this is kind of where we see love taking hold of Harry Potter and Ginny, um, of um, Ron and Hermione. Everyone's kind of falling in love, and they really capture that kind of teenage angst in a very sweet and innocent way, and I really, really loved that aspect of the movie. So Harry Potter and the Goblet, uh, excuse me, and the Half-Blood Prince. The Goblet of Fire? No, yeah, that's that was the fourth one. So this is the sixth installment. If you haven't read the book, uh, read the book. It's great. If you haven't read the book, that's okay. Go see the movie. You'll still enjoy it. Um, I've seen it twice because, to be honest with you, there is nothing, not much else out there to see this summer. I did just go see Aliens in the Attic, however, with oh, Noel. We don't have any aliens in our uh, attic. A PG-rated movie. And what can I say? Cute, funny. It really belongs on a Nickelodeon on a Friday night from 7.30 to 9. Um, about a... A family, extended family, cousins go to this house for vacation and what's in the attic. They find these little aliens. bitty aliens who are not very friendly and they're trying to dig out some kind of spaceship that's in the basement. Um, who's in it that you might know? Ashley Tisdale from both um, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. She's the kind of blonde girl. And she's also from High School Musical, which I know that you guys were just talking about, the, mm -hmm. the musical. That, I mean, that cracked me up when they said the Irish kids she's are watching, watching that too. High School Musical. And I'm like, ooh, they're in for a little surprise. Yeah, no. um, because I think that's but, how but that every high really, school really is. really, really cute. Like um, so Ashley Tisdale's in it. A couple of other actors that you'll know. Kevin Nealon from Saturday Night Live plays the dad. And it's time for him to either let his hair go gray or do something. Because, you know, he's He's getting older now, and he's still got the jet black hair, and it just doesn't look right. Um, and Doris Roberts plays the grandmother. Yeah, just kind of a goofy scene with her being a ninja. Kind of cute, kind of funny. 
enjoyable enough. It was directed by a young man named John Schultz, and basically the only other thing of note that he's ever directed was Like Mike back in 2002 with Bow Wow. Oh, yeah, that was the basketball him. one? Yep, yep. So, again, I like that. it's kind of a little bit of a ripoff of, remember the Spiderwick Chronicles? That was, again, they weren't aliens. I forget what, what those things were in the, in the living in the house. Um, and Noelle made that observation, which I thought was very astute. We came out of the movie, and I always said, how did you well, like that? Down. And she's like, well, I liked it, but it really was just like Spiderwick Chronicles. And it was, but I actually, this had some pretty funny scenes, um, a, like a the aliens shoot these little arrows into the back of your of you, and then they can use a joystick and control you. And <laughs> Ashley Tisdale, I want to get a her, set of those. Yeah, her, her boyfriend gets <laughs> possessed. I don't know what else to call it. And and they do have some really funny, very humorous scenes. physical scenes with him. Um, all in all, unless you're just unless it's like a hundred degrees and you're just looking for something to do with the kids and you want to go, go ahead, go see it. If not, I would wait for it. I was going to say wait for it on DVD, but you know, wait even longer. You can wait till it does show up on Nickelodeon on a Friday night. So that's Aliens in the Attic. It's rated PG. I'd give it, I'd probably give it one thumb up because you know what? I did sit there. I enjoyed it. But hold, I, hold on yeah. a minute. I got to shut the window because okay. I can hear the kids. But anyway, if you really want something good to do with the kids, go see Up. I know I reviewed that last time. And wait, that was, wait, wait, uh, I'm going to keep talking. Yeah, what are you doing? I'll get that. I'll get that. All right. Well, nobody needs to have you sit here beside me. I can just keep going. <laughs> kids are yelling? Mm-mm-mm. Oh, now it's going to be hot as hell. What do you think? Now it's going to be hot as hell. It's hot as hell. It's hot the product. It's hot as hell. You gotta turn the AC on then or something. It's 81 yeah. degrees in here. Yeah, but well, I couldn't get conditioning on. It'd be too loud. Oh, something. all right, Jeepers. The conditions. I wore. Is no, this in no. my contract? I know. I know. I know. I <laughs> know. Sorry. Sorry, Johnny. I guess I'm going to fill your Oh, that's good. Oh, my God. It's quarter of six. I know, you're late now. You're late. I got a date, baby. I got a date today. I got a date. Okay, let's go then. Come on. Right, so ready? you know where you are? You're just All finishing right. up Aliens in the Attic. Okay. Right. okay. So anyway, again, about Aliens in the Attic, even if you don't have anything to do with the kids for the day, I would go see Up, even if you've seen it already. Absolutely the best movie of the summer. The best movie probably of the yet. year. And I did not see it in 3D. Noelle and I went to Braintree where they did not have it in 3D. I don't think it's necessary to see it in 3D, but I am planning to see it again. We're going on vacation in a couple of weeks, and I do want to see it again. Best movie of the year by far. Up, a great Pixar production. So take the kids to see that. Next, uh, last night I went out and I saw 500 Days last of Summer. Last night? Yeah. Last night? Are you cutting it a little close? We well, I... <laughs> I don't know. What can I say? I went out You're last like me. Night, I planned this show today. 500 Days of Summer. 500 Days yeah, of Summer. Yeah, really cute movie. It's rated PG-13. It's directed by a man named Mark Webb. And this was basically his, director, his feature film directorial debut. He's mostly done music videos. Um, he's young. He's 33. And I couldn't find out where he was born anywhere on the internet. But anyway, 500 Days of Summer stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And you might know him from... Third Rock from the Sun. He was the young, cute son with the dark hair. And he was also recently in a movie that I reviewed called Stop Loss, um, which unfortunately I did not, did not care for at all. An Iraq war movie directed by Kimberly Pierce. And I'm, as usual, a big fan of female filmmakers, but it just goes to show they can make crappy movies just like the men. Um, and it also, this movie also stars Zoe Deschanel, who you might know from Elf. She was the blonde elf with the beautiful voice. She's also from Yes Man, most recently with Jim Carrey, and she plays the um, art teacher, I think, from Bridge to Terabithia, who the young boy kind of has a crush on. She's absolutely beautiful, and I have to tell you, Mark Webb, the director, must feel the same way because this whole movie basically is a absolute love letter to Zoe Deschanel. The long, lingering shots of her beautiful face, beautiful blue eyes, long, dark hair, cute figure. And she has some incredibly unusual clothes. She almost looks like Doris Day. I mean, it's set now. It's set, in, you know, now. But the clothes are very unusual for this time. You know, cute little dresses in the flats and little bows and bows and blue bows in her hair. But she's absolutely beautiful. And what I like about this is the 500 Days of Summer isn't talking about the season summer. Her name is Summer, Summer Finn, which I thought was really cute. Although Summer, 
And then fin, if you know French, fin means the end. This is 500 days of the relationship between Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who plays a, a young man named Tom Hansen, and Summer Finn. They meet when she comes to work as the assistant to his boss in his office, where he, interestingly enough, studied to be an architect, but instead finds himself writing greeting cards. Very cute, very funny. Um, and it's kind of cool at the beginning because... They don't, it's not a very, it's not a linear movie. It's not, okay, this is day one, this is day two. It's, okay, here's day one, but here's day 45, and here's day 296 in their relationship. And you just have Sounds to like put the pieces to together. You would think it would sound chaotic, but it's not. It's absolutely, um, it caught the really funny side of, you know, that men are from Mars, women are from Venus, Venus type yeah. thing. How he, um, when he first kind of notices Summer, um, the friend says, oh, you can't go out with her. She's cold as ice. This guy was trying to talk to her in the copy room, and she wouldn't talk to him. Well, he goes into the copy room, and they hit it off right away. You know, they meet in the elevator. He's got the Smith song that he's listening to. She hears. They strike up a conversation. She's very easy to talk with. The only problem I have with the movie is the cavalier attitude that she kind of enters into this relationship. This man, this young man, is clearly head over heels in love with her. Now, she does sit him down right from the start and say... I don't really, I'm not looking for anything serious right now. You know, she just moved to the city. But they very quickly, right after she makes that statement, enter into an intimate relationship. Mm, and very I, Yeah, and you know, he's smitten, and she's just kind of having a good summer for herself, which is kind of funny because it's almost always the, revol the roles are reversed. So I thought that was interesting. But she's kind of blown away at the end. Um, with his reaction to her decisions. And why was he, um, why I, is I don't he want shocked? to get into that. Right, that's what I say. Right. You know, people, people are emotional beings. You can go ahead and tell me you don't want to get serious with me, but your actions certainly speak louder than sure. words, and intimacy carries a whole lot of baggage with it. And people, I think, need to realize that. You know, you can say you don't want to be serious with me, but if your actions say otherwise, how can you get angry with me for... For falling in love with sure. you. But I, I did enjoy it. I, I, there were some really funny funny um, pieces in it. And probably what I enjoyed most was if you'd seen Enchanted. Um, remember Enchanted with uh, Amy Adams is like the princess who gets, she comes to New York. And she has this beautiful oh, yes. scene in Central Park where she's singing and dancing. And everyone's singing and dancing with her in the cartoon. Birds and animals come to life. There's a cute little kind of homage, I guess, to that, where he's, this takes homage. place, yep, this takes homage. place in LA, I don't want to say they ripped it off, you know, but they really kind of did, this takes place in LA, and again, Tom, who, you know, really feels that, that she loves him too, is walking through the park, and he's, everybody's singing with him, and it was really, again, cute movie, funny movie, great movie, no, I, I, the it only sounds great like movie. it ends, though, yeah, and they're not ends. together. So I'm, I'm not going to say not, anything about it. I didn't see it. I'm just telling you what um, I The what only I problem I did have with it, it's PG-13. There were a couple of really inappropriate... Um, we have a little problem with I the know, ratings today. I know, Because, you know, I would love for my kids to see this, but there were just a couple of instances of language that were completely unnecessary and really raunchy. So, see All it yourself. Right. If you want to go out for a nice movie... It's funny. I did enjoy it. I would have given it probably. I mean, PG-13, except for just again a couple of, a couple of instances of uh, poor language that again were unnecessary. Okay, moving on. I saw Public Enemies about a month ago because I absolutely love Johnny Depp and I love gangsters and I love gangster movies. And this is about the life of John Dillinger. And mm, I can okay. tell you that if you need a good nap, this is a great place to go. Oh, it's a sleeper, right? oh, it's, It was a real sleeper. It was absolutely the dullest movie I've ever seen about gangsters. Johnny Depp, who you know I've, I've always enjoyed, always liked him, who really becomes the character, is literally, a, he's a, he's a dead, dead ringer for Dillinger. Except the more I look at him, I'm like, who else does he remind me of? You know, he's got the little pencil thing. At the beginning, he doesn't have the mustache, but then he kind of goes into hiding, you know, because he does all these crazy things. Now, don't forget, John Dillinger was a real person. He was a real bank robber turn of the century, um, you know, when things were really bad, but did really bad things, you know, shot police officers, killed people, um, but became kind of a cult hero to some, you know, you know how that kind of happens sometimes. <laughs> Why he bugged you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm watching them going, wow, who's 
Johnny Depp remind me of? And he reminded me of the director, John Waters. I don't know if you know John Waters. He's a very quirky director. You're asking me. From Baltimore. But if you know John Waters, you know what I'm saying. And, and once I, that thought got into my head, I couldn't take any more of the movie seriously. Christian Bale is in it as well. So there you've you got like Johnny Bale. Depp and Christian Bale. How can you go wrong? Well, you can, let me tell you. This was <laughs> awful. Christian Bale plays the law. Basically, he's Melvin Purvis, and he uh, goes and you know tries to track him down. And another actor of note was Billy Crudup. He plays J. Edgar Hoover, and he What's did a really name? good Billy Crudup. Billy Crudup. Crudup. And I meant to mention Watchmen last show, and I didn't. But Watchmen is out on DVD now. Um, I was always a big fan. Was that fan. an HBO TV series or something? No, it was a movie based on the graphic novel from the mm -hmm. 80s, which was a very interesting graphic novel. I was one of the few people that I really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was good. Were there problems with it? Yes, but that's on DVD now, just as an aside. Watchmen, if you haven't had a chance to you see know, it. You know, when we were kids, you know what the public enemy movie was then? What, what? Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Remember oh, my God. Out? Yeah, that was yeah. great. Worm Beatty and Faye Dunaway. Yeah, that was Bloody a, scene. And oh. Great scene at the end. It was a scary Nothing movie like, It kid. was a scary movie when you were a young yeah. kid. So skip Public Enemies. Unless you are the hugest Johnny Depp fan in the world, I would absolutely wait. It's still in the movie, so it must be raking in enough money. Um, and Marianne Cotillard is in it, too. It kind of has Dillinger's girlfriend at the end. She was from La Vie en Rose. Remember, I reviewed that. That was a Academy Award Rose. winner. For a foreign film, I think two years ago. If you haven't seen that, see that. La Vie en Rose. Forget public enemies. When you want to see something good with Johnny Depp, rent, rent. What's eating Gilbert Grape? You might never, never have seen that. An older you Johnny, uh, this. Johnny Depp. What's film. eating Gilbert Grape? Great movie, great one. I'm gonna have to speak real quick now. Bruno, oh. Boy, um, are we rated out R. Of time? Yeah. <laughs> what do we say we're gonna go? Thirty. I don't know. I as long as you want. Anyway, They'll shut I you off. Bruno. They'll shut you off. Now, I was a huge, huge fan of Borat, and actually when it came out, I think I said oh, it was this my is favorite movie okay. of the year. I absolutely love Borat. I've mm -hmm. always liked Sasha Baron Cohen. I liked the Ali G show. I liked the crazy characters that he comes up with. He's absolutely hysterical. He becomes his character, and if you saw Borat, you know what I'm talking about. Tom Faye, he likes yeah. this guy. Bruno, however, is just a cheap knockoff. I don't know what he was thinking. <laughs> uh, directed by the same director, Larry Childs, a 52-year-old director from Brooklyn who basically um, did lots of TV, Entourage, Seinfeld, and he did Borat. This, and again, Borat, was it crude? Yeah, absolutely. But did it shine a light on the hypocrisy and racism that are still so alive and well in, in the country? And it just goes to show you how people do just about anything if you hold up a TV camera. People mm -hmm. think that they're going to be on TV. The things that people will say and do, incredible. And Borat did a great job. Look at us. Bruno, however, <laughs> um, he plays a... Uh, an Austrian supermodel, Sasha Baron Cohen. You've probably seen the ads. He's got the blonde hair, and again, he's got the tight, tight, tight clothes. And I'll have to do. Yeah, what? I saw the picture for the, the ad for the movie. Um, probably the, the highlight of the whole movie, though, was a, um, a man named Gustav Hammerstein. He plays Lutz, and he's kind of like an assistant to Bruno, and he loves him. He absolutely loves him. And the way he puppy dog kind of hangs around and tails after him was really cute and funny. Paula Abdul is in it as herself, and I really don't know as if she herself. knew what was going on. You know how they kind of, um, you know, you don't know if, did she know that she was, did she know who Bruno was? Was she in on it? You know, sometimes you don't know if they're in on it. And I don't know if she knew who was in on it. And then at the end, they do a really funny thing. It's called the Dove of Peace. And it's one of those all-star fundraisers where they get all the famous musicians. Bono, um, Chris Martin from Coldplay, Elton John Slash, Snoop Dogg, Sting. Now it was kind of funny, you know, making fun of that, you know, that kind of movement with people. You know what I'm saying. But again, this was extraordin extraordinarily rude, crude, lewd. And not near as thought provoking or revealing as Borat. Where My Borat, you can year old son saw it and did not like it. No, I mean, it is disturbingly lewd. I mean, I have to tell you, I have a very sick sense of humor. And I think poor Tom was sitting beside me. I dragged him to this because he is not a big Sasha Baron Cohen fan. I dragged poor Tom to this movie. And he's just sitting there. And granted, I have a very sick sense of humor. And I found a lot of it absolutely hysterically funny. But at the same time, I'm saying to myself, this is really disgusting. <laughs> So don't take your grandmother to see Bruno. But, does, but doesn't he always try to do that in everything he's in? Try, yeah, he tries but, to go but a lot of it's more the limit. thoughtful. He tries beyond to, the limit is one thing. That's all this was, and that's a good way of looking at it. That's all it was, was let's go beyond the limits, let's break all the so limits. So it breaks your expectations. Yeah, there was, there was nothing good about it. I did laugh a lot, but it was kind of sick. Um, 
The proposal is also still out in, in um, movie theaters right now. It's rated PG-13, directed by a woman, Anne Fletcher. I don't know why we still have to make a big deal out of female directors, but we do. We don't. Why do not you? That many of them. No one else is asking She's a 43-year-old from Detroit. She directed 27 Dresses and Step Up, both of which the kids really liked. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like Step Up. I didn't see 27 Dresses. Uh, Sandra Bullock plays Margaret Tate. She's a high-powered Canadian who has come to America and works as an editor for a very um, important book company. And her assistant is Ryan Reynolds. Now, you might know that name. Um, he's all over People magazine and everywhere now because all of a sudden he's developed his abs and he doesn't have a shirt on. I guess he's the new Matthew McConaughey <laughs> of movie them. But I've always liked Ryan Reynolds, and I reviewed a movie last time, I think, called Adventureland, where he kind of plays... Um, the older guy to these 20-something kids, kind of, he's like their, um, their guide in life. He played a handyman. Rent Adventureland, I think you'd like that. This movie, however, um, really disappointed me for a couple of reasons. It's a female director, and this was so, there were so many stereotypes in this that were demeaning to women that I was livid when I left. Um, again, Living. yeah, Sandra Bullock plays a woman named Margaret Tate. She is being deported. She comes up with this great idea. I'm going to get my assistant to marry me, goes home, meets the assistant's family. And she finds it hard to believe that this lowly assistant actually comes from a nice family in Alaska that's actually very wealthy. Well, what's this wealthy boy doing being my assistant? Well, it's because he loves books and he someday hopes to be an editor himself. And, oh, if she would just get a boyfriend and, you know, have some physical fun, she wouldn't be so rotten because she's the rotten boss, you know. And there's some very funny scenes of people in the office, you know, like when she walks in, they all quickly... Um, act you know, like they're working. Yeah, oh, sure. you know, act like they're working. But not only that, but they have like an in-office, in you know, chat thing, or instant message. Oh, here she comes, you know. So it's absolutely that part. The office scenes, I thought, were very, very funny because we've all had bosses that have not been, you know, exactly what we'd hoped for. But this Is that the case really, now at your current job? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> um, you know, and again, the, the family, you've got Mary Steenburgen plays, um, Steenburgen, Bergen, plays uh, Ryan Reynolds' mother. Craig T. Nelson plays his dad. And it's the same thing. Dad's disappointed because the son isn't going to come into the family business. I think it was hardware or something. He's, he's a gentle, quiet boy who wants to read. You know, I'm like, oh, my God, how many more stereotypes? And then we get Betty White thrown in as the grandmother, the little silly, funky grandmother, you know, and they're trying to fit the dress on her. Have you seen the ads? And she's trying to fit the dress in there. It was just... Oh, yeah, Very I, I manipulative, that, yeah. you know, they want to get married here. Oh, no, you know, Nana's old and she's going to die. Why don't we have it here? You know, very manipulative grandmother. The, the wife, you know, his mother always smoothing things over. The whole thing was nothing but a stereotype. The only thing I did like it about it, about it, however, is that Sandra Bullock has got to be a good 10 years older than Ryan Reynolds, and it's about time we start to see some older leading ladies getting paired up with some younger leading men. And she carries it off. She looks great. But not a very good movie. You know, wait for it on DVD if you want to see it at all. Um, again, I've seen a million things. The Hangover rated R. Directed by Todd Phillips, he's a 37-year-old Brooklyn boy. And I, if I had seen what else he directed, I probably would have thought twice about this. Road Trip with Tom Green, although I love Tom Green. Old School and School for Scoundrels. So that's kind of his directorial style, really low, really bass. However, The Hangover has gotten great reviews. It's, this is supposedly the sleeper hit of the summer. Stars Bradley Cooper that you might know from Yes Men. He plays a school teacher. Ed Helms, who I love from The Office and Daily Show. And Zach Galifianakis, I don't know if that's how you say it. And um, another guy named Justin Bartha, who you might know from the, um, what's the one with Nicolas Cage and running around in the American history movies? Come on, come on, come on. Well, oh, anyway. yeah, not in museum. No, no, no. no. <laughs> anyway, it's about a guy oh. getting married, and they go to his bachelor party in Las Vegas, and oh, my God, all these crazy things happen. And Mike Tyson has, I, I'm not even going to call it a cameo, because unfortunately he's in it for a little bit longer than a cameo. And that was absolutely heartbreaking to me. Someone who grew up with Mike Tyson, and certainly at, at, at the beginning of his career, I don't think I've ever seen, and you never will see a boxer with the talent of Mike Tyson, to see him reduced to this ridiculous, you know, he's playing himself in this movie. It just, that broke my heart. I really did. Anyway, I didn't find it all that funny. I didn't think it was that great. You might like it. I must be getting old, huh, Brian? I bet all you 15-year-olds out there buying tickets to see Up would love to see it. All right, is that it? Yeah, a couple of DVDs, though. You know what? I found that this summer there's no really good action movie out there, so I went and I rented a couple of Jason Statham films because I do like Jason Statham. 
Transporter, you might know him from the Transporter movies. One, two, three just came out on DVD. I saw the first one, and that was enough. Oh, I love them. He delivers packages to people. He drives around in this cool Audi, and he's just gorgeous, ladies. <laughs> but he's so cool. He's like he's like the bad James Bond, you know. Um, um, but then I got a DVD called Crank, and that starred Jason Statham in 2006 because I had heard that that was kind of down and dirty, and it's rated R, and he plays a professional assassin named Chev Chelios, and he is really cool and he is really bad. But you know, it's funny. In 2006, he had a great, a great body. In 2008, in Transporter 3, I don't know who must have told him, but he must have gone on some kind of crazy diet, diet and pumping the iron because he's just so chiseled. And I honestly tell you the truth, I, I thought he was cuter in... When he wasn't quite so chiseled. I really did. That's, that's just It's hard to keep you happy, opinion. isn't it? I mean... No, I, any guy that's really ripped like that, you know he's spending way too really much ripped. time at the gym, and he's, you know, he's not interested in anything with himself. Don't you think? Uh, no comment. Okay, let me wind it up. So, again, to recap, if I were you and I had kids and I had to take him to a movie, I would probably go back to see Up. Up was great. 3D or not 3D, either one is fine. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, see it ten times. I've seen it twice and it was better the second time. Aliens in the Attic, wait for it on DVD. 500 Days of Summer was cute for the adults and the family. Forget just about everything else that's out there. A um, couple of things coming out that look good. G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra, that looks good. Julie and Julia, about a true story about a young woman who wrote a blog about... Um, going through Julia Child's cookbook and cooking oh, every yes, recipe. Yes, that looks really cute. District that. 9, kind of a sci-fi from Peter Jackson, although I don't think he is the director. He's the um, Lord of the Rings director. Funny People with Adam Sandler. I might try to see that this weekend. Um, and Paper Heart with Michael Sarah, who I absolutely love. He's the young boy from Juno um, and Arrested Development. So there's, there's some things on the horizon. If you have to stay home and watch TV, if you haven't seen this season's Rescue Me, you are missing the best TV ever. Absolutely unbelievable. That's Dennis Leary's fire, New York Firefighter series on FX. And this is the third or fourth, maybe even fifth season. They, they actually had a whole year off because of the writer's strike, and it's the best thing that ever happened to the show because it was getting a little stale, and this year it's come back on fire, right? It's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so enjoy the rest of the summer. <laughs> okay, we'll folks, you you've endured another <laughs> another movie review section of Talk of the Town, and you ought to be uh, awarded for that. Oh, sure. <laughs> now. All right, folks. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank Bye. you for watching Talk of the Town. <laughs> Say goodnight, Eileen. Good night, Brian. <laughs> Good night, Eileen. Good night, Eileen. Bye-bye, folks. Good night.